Hi everybody, my name is Zach from My Shire Farm Quality Quail, and today we're gonna to try to help you on your journey with Caternix Quail and becoming more self-sufficient by talking about incubators. Yes, all incubators lie, and in this video we are going to try to help you have a better hatch rate and become more successful. Now, in the last video we did, we actually talked about all the temperature issues you could uh, come across while incubating Caternix quail. This video, we're gonna talk about humidity. Now, <clears throat> in the last video, I gave you ranges for the temperature. It's the same deal for humidity. So, with humidity during the incubation process, it really needs to be around 45%. Now, you do have a range in there. It could be between 35 and it could be up to 55%, but 45% is really where you wanna be at. But with that being said, during the incubation process, humidity is not that important. Don't overstress it. I know that it's very, very difficult for a lot of incubators to hold and stay consistent with the humidity level. So don't overthink it. Don't stress out. It's going to be okay. If it drops down to 15 or 20, it's not a big deal. If it goes up to 55 or 60, it's not the end of the world, okay? Um, you would rather have it low than high during the incubation process. Now, with that being said, it's really important that the humidity is correct during lockdown, okay? So that's mainly what we're gonna focus on. Now, some uh, humidity issues that you might come across is if you have a lot of deformities, if you have a lot of fully developed chicks um, that did not hatch, that, that did not break the shell. Um, and the reason why we increase the humidity, so we talked about wanting it to be at 45% humidity at or during the incubation process. We want to bump that up to anywhere from 65 to 75%. I like to lean more towards the 75%, uh, but Again, you've got that range, 65 to 75% at lockdown because you need to soften that egg. Now, the temperature has allowed those chicks to grow inside the egg during each day of the incubation process. But on day 15, you take the turners out, you put them into lockdown, you lay them flat, you bump up that humidity, and you let them hatch out. The reason you bump it up is because you need to soften that egg so that they can break through. This is much more important with Caternix quail than it is so, like chickens because chicken eggs are much larger. The chicken chicks are about three times the size of a quail chick. So they don't have a lot of room, nor are they very large to be able to break through that egg like chickens could. Now with quail, you want it to be soft enough where they can break through without exerting a ton of energy so that they can fluff up, go into the brooder, and, and be all happy and grow extremely well, right? Um, so you want it to be around 65 to 75%. Now, let's say that it doesn't go below above that. Let's say it stays at 55%. At the end of the hatch, you candle and you go, why did I have, you know, 80, 85, 90% of my eggs fully developed and they didn't hatch out. It's because they couldn't break through that hard shell of an egg, so they died inside the egg. Now, you could have the reverse issue. So what happens when your humidity spikes to let's say 85 or 90% humidity? Well, if that's the case, they drown in the egg. Um, so it's, it's, again, you have some wiggle room, but it is very important to stay within those boundaries. Okay, um, so that is one thing that you want to look at, and that's a little hard to diagnose at the end. Uh, if they are fully developed in the egg and did not hatch, again, it's for sure a humidity issue, but now you need to determine whether it's too low or too high because both of them will have the same problem. Now, with that being said, I said it in the last video, I'm going to say it in this video, and we have one more All Incubators Live video coming up next. Um, and I'm going to say it in that one too. Um, all incubators lie. It is very, very important that you have a check and balances 
with your incubator. So purchase a separate thermometer slash hygrometer. I recommend the Govi, but do your own research, look at the reviews, find something that you're comfortable with, put that in there, and make sure that the incubator is reading correctly at all times. If they are not matching up and one is reading different from the other, I always recommend that you uh, adhere to the one that you purchase separately inside the incubator. I've done multiple incubator reviews and every one I've done, the incubator has not read correctly. It's been off a half a degree, which again, I'm in that um, safe zone, not the end of the world, but there was one of them that was off a one degree to one and a half degrees and now I'm in the critical zone, I could have destroyed the hatch. So it's very important that you have a separate thermometer and hygrometer. The hygrometer is pretty much the, th it's, it's testing your, your humidity. So it's making sure your humidity is where it says it's supposed to be at. So that's very important. Um, again, during the incubation process, humidity is not that big of a deal. Temperature is much, much more important, but humidity at lockdown really can affect your hatch. Uh, the biggest things that you wanna take away from this is if they're fully developed in the eggs, it's always an, a humidity issue. Um, also, if your humidity is too low, even let's say 60%, and they just start hatching late, that is going to result in deformities such as wry neck or curled toes. So that's something that you'll want to look at as well. So hopefully this helps you. I hope that you're just learning this and getting this experience uh, and, and knowledge under your belt. But unfortunately, some of you might be watching this because you had a bad hatch or things didn't go well or you want to improve it. And unfortunately, it's just a lesson that we all have to learn. I hope you can take this information, diagnose the issue, fix the problem, and get much, much better at your quail journey. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to comment below. I, I will be happy to answer them. And remember, every Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I go live right here on our YouTube channel, my Shire Farm for a live question and answer. I do the same thing on Tuesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you have any questions, you're more than welcome to comment below. I will answer as quickly as I can, but I'd love to see you on the live, answer your questions live, and then if you have any follow-ups, I can help you then as well. Thank you very, very much for, ha for watching. Happy hatching and good luck.